This video contains content that viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Court police say a six-year-old boy attacked by his family's dog. The majority of dog bites are 100% preventable. List here in California when it comes to those dog bites and attacks. Stiff is in the dog pound under quarantine after biting a television news anchor. 7 News reporter Lance Renee. Welcome back to 100 Horrible Ways People Can Die. I'm John. And I'm Alex. And today we're going to introduce our guest host, ChatGPT. Today's topic might send shivers down your spine if you're a dog lover. We're talking about a grim occurrence in history, being mauled to death by dogs. But before we dive into that, John, you brought your dog Trixie today. Do tell us about her. Hey Trixie, Trixie. Trixie is a 16 year old Jack Russell Terrier. She's very well trained, she's crate trained. She's also trained to sit, lay down, shake hands, uh, stay, fetch. Uh, she can also uh, on command chase squirrels and birds. And uh, but in her old age, she just kind of mostly lays around. Yeah. Uh, I think Jack Russell Terriers were originally bred to hunt foxes, so she has that instinct to chase things, and it was uh, pretty difficult to train her to not chase things without a command, mm -hmm. but we were able to get it done, and, and here she is. Yeah, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> you have any questions about Trixie, or? No, I've known Trixie a couple of years now. Well, John, Trixie sounds like an incredible companion with her wide array of skills and training. It's impressive to hear about her obedience and her broad range of talents, from playing ball to hunting smaller animals. She is a perfect example of a well-trained dog, which brings us to our main topic. In spite of her hunting instinct, Trixie is controlled and does not pose a threat to people. Her training plays a big role in this, and it's a crucial aspect when it comes to preventing dog attacks one of the many horrible ways people can tragically lose their lives. Today's show will delve into historical instances of such events, their likelihood in today's world, and most importantly, how we can prevent them or protect ourselves in such scenarios. Trixie is a pretty well-trained dog, especially in her older age, but not all dogs are well-trained. Some are downright vicious. Yeah, that's right. Um, according to the CDC, there are certain breeds that attack people and even kill people uh, at a higher percentage rate than than other dogs now it's, it's uh, very important to keep in mind that just because a breed of dog is considered more dangerous than others it has a lot to do with the way that they're brought up uh, the way they're trained and controlled by their owners so uh, the number one most dangerous dog on the list is no one, to no one's surprise. Poodles. Pit bulls. Oh, darn it. Pit bulls. So pit bulls over thousands of years mm -hmm. were trained as fighting dogs, attack dogs, guard dogs, like just to kill. They were bred for their ferocity and their, uh, and their just sheer, you know, uh, aggressiveness. aggressiveness. Yeah. That's right. Aggressiveness. And size so, too. They're pretty big. Well, not really. They're not that big. They don't get up well, that. They get to about a hundred pounds sometimes, depending on hey, which type of. Let's say medium size, but they're yeah. not small. Yeah, they're not small. They're not small, but they're not huge either. Yeah. Um, so number one, obviously, pit bull. What do you think? Of, do you have any uh, information uh, about pit bulls or pit bull I attacks? don't because I didn't read the script. <laughs> um, but yes, you always hear stories about pit bulls killing people or mauling them. There's actually like um, pit bulls when you see them in the pounds and and uh, in rescues, you know they're very hard breed to get rid of, you yeah, know. So there's a lot of yeah, no one wants them because of their bad rap. But there's a lot of advocacy groups out there that that really think that pit bulls are more of a uh, they could be a gentle a dog or a dog a family dog. Right. I um, 
I personally wouldn't wouldn't risk it. Um, if I wanted a dog for personal protection or something like that, or a junkyard dog to protect my property, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I'd go with Pitbull. But yeah. as far as a family dog, that's not for me, but that's up to the audience what they'd like well, to do or not. You're you know? also taking it from a pound. Who knows where it's been, unfortunately. It could have been living a pretty rough life and abused, and that'll make it more likely to be vicious. Absolutely. So the way that a dog's treated in its younger years, obviously, if it's abused, beaten, thrown in with into illegal dog fighting, and that's another thing. Dog fighting was, was legal up until I think the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh. Dog fighting was banned in 1976. As the activity grew in popularity, so too did opposition to it. By the early 20th century, the United Kennel Club dropped its support, and by the 1960s, most states had made it illegal. It was not until 1976 that it was outlawed in all states, and even then enforcement was generally lax. So, I have no you know, idea, but I know historically dog fighting has been a proper sport. Yeah, so since these dogs were bred for fighting and their aggressiveness, and uh, you know, so sense. so that's why Pitbull is number one. Number two on the list, do you know what it is? Can you guess? Is it a poodle? It's definitely not the poodle, it is a Rottweiler. It's one of these days. So Rottweiler is the, the next one, and Rottweilers. it's it's a pretty big dog. They're Rottweilers big. can get get up to, I bet they get up to close to 200 pounds, a Rottweiler. It's more than me. It's more than me, too. I'm not quite there. Oh, I'm showing off, huh? I hopefully I'm not. Showing off for our lady viewers here, huh? <laughs> really? Lady viewer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, no. Uh, so they're a pretty dangerous dog too. Same reasons. They're just they're aggressive. They were actually, uh, from what I understand, bred to hunt bear. Oh, okay. So there are specific varieties I've seen of dogs that are actually bred to kill bears, and they're quite large too. And this is one of those. One of them. Yeah. Okay. So this dog was uh, bred to protect, uh, you know, property you and hunt hunt down bears. A Rottweiler, a Rottweiler versus Smokey the Bear. Who would you take? Uh, I think a bear, depending on, I, is I it a black bear, a brown bear, you know, I, I think that... Uh, the dogs were bred to kill the bears, but the bears were not bred to kill the dogs, so... I, I don't know, um, there are there are other breeds, too, that, that aren't on the list, that, uh, for example, the Irish Wolfhound. Mm. Well, Irish Wolfhound is the largest, one of the largest dog breeds out there, and they were bred to hunt oh, down wolves. and kill packs of wolves. Well, there's a reason there's no wolves in Ireland anymore, or in the UK, because they were all killed, mostly by dogs. Also in the US, um, we basically killed, killed almost the all the wolves, and uh, well, they and just they started bringing them back, and I guess uh, since they brought them back into the eco of Yellowstone, right? Yes, well, I was just reading a book about the history of the Adirondacks. So, for example, the Adirondacks used to have wolves, and they were all hunted to ex extinction in that area. Probably with mostly dogs. Yeah, for sure. Rough terrain. So the third, third dangerous dog is kind of um, controversial. Some some mm -hmm. say German Shepherd. Some say, uh, you know, like the Japanese. I think it's called a Kita dog. Um, there's also Chow Chow is another dog. Has like a curly tail. It's a Chinese dog. Uh -huh. They're all relatively large dogs. Um, and they can all be very dangerous. So you're saying there's a correlation between the size of a dog and how dangerous it is? Yes, because it's harder. Logical. Yeah, it's yeah. harder to control the larger dogs. So if they're not well trained, the larger dogs obviously can more easily maul you to death. Well, how is a dog killing you? It's mechanical in nature, right? It's biting you, ripping out flesh, or making you bleed out, or something like that. If it's a tiny little dog, like even something like Trixie's size, it's going to be a lot harder for that dog to just make that much damage. But even small dogs like Trixie are, can become dangerous because that dog bite can become, um, you know, maybe the dog's infected with rabies and now you have rabies or the, uh, you could get meningitis from a bite or another type of disease from the dog bite and that can kill you. And I think from, we can maybe corroborate this with ChatGPT, but from what I've seen, it's the infections and the disease that'll kill more people than the actual dog attacks themselves. Well, I know that ChatGPT does have a dog to talk about. Um, so ChatGPT, if you want to tell us about your dog, that'd be great. Thanks, John, I do. The Mastiff, also known as the English Mastiff, is a breed with a history that dates back thousands of years. They are among the oldest breeds in the world, with their ancestors depicted in Egyptian art from as far back as 3000 BC. The breed as we know it today, however, was developed in England Mastiffs were traditionally bred for guarding and war due to their size and strength. They were used to protect homes, livestock, and even castles. During wars, they were utilized to guard prisoners and even sent into battle. 
they have an instinctive desire to protect their owners and property which, coupled with their size, can make them formidable guardians. Today's mastiffs are generally gentle giants, known for their loyal, protective nature and an impressive height that can reach up to 30 inches at the shoulder, with a weight exceeding 200 pounds. This makes them one of the largest dog breeds in the world. Their size and strength are precisely why they could potentially pose a risk. A fully grown mastiff is incredibly powerful. If a mastiff becomes aggressive, whether out of fear, protection, or poor training, they can cause significant harm purely due to their size and strength. The key to preventing aggression in mastiffs, as with any breed, lies in early socialization, consistent training, and a loving home environment. They need to be taught from a young age to be comfortable around different people, animals, and environments. Responsible ownership is also crucial. Due to their size, mastiffs require owners who can handle and control them appropriately. This isn't a breed for everyone. They need plenty of space and an owner who understands the specific needs and challenges of large breeds. Remember, there's no bad breed, only bad or in many cases uninformed owners. Understanding the history, temperament and needs of your pet can make a world of difference in preventing tragic incidents. Now on to our story for today. The case of Diane Whipple is a poignant reminder of the potentially disastrous consequences when pet ownership goes awry. Diane Whipple was a 33-year-old lacrosse coach at St. Mary's College in California. On January 26, 2001, she was returning to her San Francisco apartment when she was attacked by two large Presa Canarios, a breed of dogs known for their size and power. These dogs, named Bane and Hera, were owned by her neighbors, Marjorie Knoller and Robert Knoll. Whipple suffered over 77 wounds across her body and lost a massive amount of blood. Despite her neighbor Knoller's attempts to pull the dogs off and the subsequent medical attention Whipple received, she tragically passed away from her injuries. In the aftermath of the attack, it was discovered that the dogs had been aggressive in the past. Yet no significant measures had been taken to manage or control them. The owners, Noller and Noel, were held legally responsible for Whipple's death. Noller was convicted of second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter, while Noel was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and owning a mischievous animal that killed a person. In terms of likelihood, it's important to note that fatal dog attacks are relatively rare, especially in comparison to other causes of injury and death. According to CDC data, roughly 30 to 50 people in the U.S. die from dog attacks each year, out of a population of over 300 million. However, non-fatal dog attacks are more common, and the emotional, psychological, and physical damage they inflict can be severe. Prevention and protection are paramount to avoid such tragic incidents. Here are some key steps one can take. Be cautious around unfamiliar dogs and always respect their space. Avoid direct eye contact, which dogs can interpret as a threat. Don't run from a dog, as their instinct might encourage them to chase. If you're knocked over by a dog, curl into a ball and protect your face, neck, and ears. Teach children how to behave safely around dogs. If you own a dog, ensure it's trained and socialized properly. Dogs should be kept under control in public spaces. It's also important to advocate for responsible pet ownership and stricter control measures for potentially dangerous dogs, which can help to further reduce the risk of such incidents occurring. Thanks for joining us on another episode of 100 Horrible Ways People Can Die. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe out there.